Happy March! Michelle Alcorn here, president of Atlanta Canada Language Academy out of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, airing from my kitchen in Lower Coverdale, Atlantic Canada. And it is March 7th, 2021, and we're super excited to be here with mom. Say hi to the world. That world. Yeah. Oh, we've got the camera so that uh, oh, you can see her. Yeah. So we're just getting grooving and getting set up here and waiting for our people to arrive. So welcome to Atlantic Canada Cooks. We've got a great menu review, <laughs> review and we're on the A team. So yay, a Canada, New Brunswick. New Brunswick, this is where we are. And we're gonna cook from here today. And we've got a maple madness for the month of March. And we want to kick it off this uh, with all recipes highlighted with maple, but every week we're gonna be highlighting maple throughout the entire month. So we're very excited about that. Well, welcome to March, everybody. Good morning, Fairies. I'm Michelle Alfred, an extremely proud president of your of Atlantic Canada Language Academy. And you know, we've had a great journey and it's been an incredible year. And I have to say, I, I want to be so thankful for you know our team from around the world that's on here and we get together every week and our guests that come in and our students and just to experience what's going on. 31 weeks that we've been doing this wonderful journey together. And, and Jacqueline from Vietnam, I always that, love that smiling face. It's like, wow. And, you know, I know Amazing. every week for me, it brings a big gift into the week. And what, what's been going on in the world, which we all know isn't great, but to, it, we get an hour to not have to think about that and get to think about what's great in food. And what's better than thinking about sweet maple syrup, Right? And all those sweet, wonderful things. So for those from in Canada, we know that March is an incredibly important month um, it, it, this season out here in Atlantic Canada. And I'm gonna ask David here in a few minutes to say a few words of kind of what's going on this season. So maybe everybody can learn about. We're so excited to have him here this morning. And, uh, but I am gonna talk about our menu, which we always like to do. And from uh, my lovely partner and MVP, Rosalind is going to be making some maple granola, which by the way, I've had her granola. It's some of the best ever. So I'm excited to see that. So she's going to make it. We're not going to see the end result. That one takes a little bit longer to cook. I've got some uh, maple glazed pork, which of course I've seasoned with this great garlic pepper rub, which is made from product that was from David Briggs and Angela, so two of our suppliers came together to make this particular product. So our, our pork's been seasoned with that. Uh, Mom and I are gonna make caramelized onions, my maple caramelized onions, great signature dish. Very excited because Angela dropped me off a basket of some really unique different onions. So I'm gonna talk about those. And those are ones that you can get locally and, and there's plenty of varieties. I'm always mindful with my English teacher on that I'm using my English appropriately on that one. Uh, we've got some cocktail hour with Richard. So what it wouldn't be a uh, maple if we didn't celebrate with some cocktails. And so he's going to share some wonderful different cocktails. And mom and I've got one here as well. And um, I've got a, a sweet potato bake that I'm going to do with some maple that we're going to share. And we've got, and I think, yeah, uh, Marcella's just going to share some of the maple experiences she's having from her kids from. Do you have a video or anything to share with us today or just some great stories? Not, not really today. I was trying to think what to do with maple because I don't have any, but I can tell you a few stories about what uh, I, I, I've been trying to modify the pisco sour recipe because instead of the syrup, the sugary thing, you know, using the, the maple. I will have to try that in Canada, though, because I don't have anything here. Oh, David Briggs, I think you just found a really cool, that's a really, really unique Chilean drink. We'll have to have that way when, when Marcel arrives to Canadianize that. Richard will be all over being the mixologist on that one. I can see it now. Yeah. That'll be great. So There will be, there, Michelle, there will be Pisco in each of the suitcases we carry to Canada. <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to figure out how we get that imported here. So that's for sure. 
I want to call out my shirt today. This is an amazing gift that I got from our good friend and supporter, Lynn Kofa and Chris. Um, and Saturday nights, we we I, we cook prep with them every Saturday night. And I, and I always like to call out when I'm wearing this particular shirt because it says on the A team, E H. So whoever is managing our chat, that is such a Canadian saying. And you'll often hear someone use it. And I'm sure we all use it. And I'm really enjoying our, our Richard hanging out more with us as his Canadian friends because his A's are coming out more often, E H's. So Actually, I, was uh, a class, I was teaching a class last Monday and uh, we were doing a little script and I was editing it. So I, I was putting the A's on at the proper places where a Canadian would and having the, the students try to read them naturally. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I love it. That is a fantastic exercise. Thank you, Lynn. There, there's a great one. So David, maybe why don't before we start, we start cooking. Um, so gonna, actually, you know what? I'm gonna start my onions and then I'm gonna give it over to you. Why? Because we're gonna have these onions cooked throughout the recipe. So this is a dish that David has tasted. So I love that this one, him and I have talked about this from a, hey, let's figure out someday to turn this into a product. And there's a lot of unique things when you're making product that's fresh when it comes to, um, we're gonna get some olive oil. Yeah, in a big pan. So my unbelievable sous chef, my mom, is going to get some olive oil going in the pan. So we're gonna start with some olive oil. The other ingredient is, I've got some diced up garlic. Always good with garlic. So we're gonna put a nice amount of garlic in there. And everybody knows the herb that's going in. I wish you could all smell it. And uh, for anybody in the chat box, time. And who says you can't give the gift of time? So I love this. So it is one of my favorite herbs. So what I have in this little bowl is probably about a quarter of a cup of thyme that I had taken off these branches. And I'm gonna show everybody a trick. The thyme is very woody like this. But if you just pull backwards, all the little leaves come right off, the stick gets left behind, and then those are gonna go right in with my onions. So I'm gonna give this bowl over to my mom, but these are all cut up and I'm gonna show you, but how beautiful is that? Right? So thank you, Angela McDougall. So mom, once the oil gets hot, once the oil gets really hot, um, and we are going to put them in. What we don't want to do is put the cold onions in a cold pan. So when you're cooking, and I want to, this is really important when you're cooking caramelized onions especially. So get that oil up to a nice medium heat. You don't want it so it burns them. So a nice medium heat. And then you can put all of your cold onions into that medium hot pan. What I do is I usually drop one onion in. And as long as it's got a nice little sizzle around the onion, then it's probably safe to put them all in. And the biggest reason why is if the onions sit in the oil, they soak up the oil. And we don't want them to soak it up. We want them to cook in that oil. So uh, because this recipe is about caramelized onions, how you cook it is really important. And they're gonna cook pretty much the length of the show and they're gonna go in really clear and they're gonna come out nice and brown. And of course, I'm gonna to top them with about a quarter of a cup of maple syrup at the end. And I'm not doing it till the end of the recipe because I wanna keep that flavor. If I put it in early, I will cook out the maple syrup. And one of the things that we say here, even though we can get a lot of it, we want to make sure that we use it and really honor that flavor. So. I like to use a few different onions. So this is a, just more of our traditional white onion that you would get here. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I slice them, which is very important to get the texture in the caramelized onions. Today, I also have some leeks. So that was a wonderful addition. And I really wanna thank Angela for bringing those along. But um, does everybody, you know, uh, I would maybe raise a hand if you've cooked with a leek before just so I can see a show of hands. All right, most people have cooked with a leek before. Those who aren't on video, you do have a little other hand. So one of the things I wanna say, when you're cleaning them, remember to cut and clean down. 
because when they grow out like a bigger onion, and I've just got a little demo here, look, here's his baby buddy. This is a green onion and that one's a leek. They, don't, they look the same, so they grow the same. So one of the things I always say is I cut down and then I wash it this way so the dirt's still sometime at the top. So the one I already put in there was very dirty. This one's a little smaller, he's probably not. I also use these beautiful red onions and they're a little bit stronger flavor, but they're gonna look very beautiful in the dish when you're cooking it as well. The other thing I put in was some shallots. So a shallot, again, in the onion family, these are a milder flavor. So I put those in there. The red ones, I cut a little chunkier because I wanted to really be able to see them. So that's the variety of onions that I put inside of this. So the simple thing in this recipe is onions, salt, pepper, garlic, thyme, and the cook thyme, T-I-M-E. And at the end of it, we're gonna finish it with maple syrup. So I'm hoping everybody can see here. I'm gonna put down, I'm gonna show you a little cutting demo. So this is a regular onion that I cut in half. So you wanna cut it so the grain, the onions are going this way, so they're long. So simply cut the onion in half and then make sure you have a sharp knife. There's nothing worse than cutting onions with a dull knife. So what you wanna do is, and you want the onion to be a flat surface so it's safer. And you're gonna notice that my fingers are curled in a bit so I don't cut them and my hands back on the knife. But what I'm gonna do is just cut them into thin slices. And then when this side gets a little unbalanced, I flip it over and then it's another flat surface. So it's easier to cut. So that's how we want the onion to come out. Everybody see that? So you get the, like the long piece on the onion. So I will wipe my computer off later. Um, that gives the onions a better texture. If you dice them or you cut them into smaller pieces, they will taste delicious, I promise you that. But this style allows the onions to be a little bit more stringy, we would say. And that way when they cook up and you're putting them on things, you get the long onion when you're working with the caramelized onion. And we'll show you that after. So mom's got them in the pan and they're cooking away. And I'm gonna show you how beautiful this medley looks. And then David, I'm gonna get you to talk about some maple syrup before we go over to Jacqueline. So let's Hi, see, how beautiful is that? Too bad Michelle can't get her camera. There we go. And mom's gonna dump the thyme in and that's gonna cook for about 35 minutes. So I'm gonna get David to say a few words and then we're gonna go to Jacqueline to learn about her corn chowder. Okay, David. well, maple industry has, uh, been uh, it's 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 a uh, starting we hope uh, very soon the weather turned very cold the last uh, week or so so there hasn't been much uh, activity as far as maple sap running but uh, a lot of producers are in the woods right now getting their trees tapped and getting ready uh, hopefully for the next uh, four weeks it depends uh, every year is different but Usually it starts around uh, March, sometime mid to early March and runs into uh, first of April, uh, sometimes into the mid towards the end of April. So we're anticipating uh, hopefully a good year. Uh, there's a good snow cover on the ground. Uh, not that that makes a huge difference, but it'll certainly uh, help in prolonging the season for us this year. So. Um, I, uh, I don't know, Michelle, did you want me to talk about uh, some recipes or I don't want to take up a whole hour here, but I could talk about using maple for about two days, I think, but uh, what I do you want to- I'm you could. Pardon? Yeah, David, I, I really like, I want to see if there's any questions from the group, but you know, just having people understand what's going on this season is really, really good. But yeah. maybe tell us about one of the things this time of year 
you know, what are the experiences and maybe for the group that we do and how you prepare for taking it out onto the snow? Maybe if you just talk about that one cool experience, because that's a really important part of what happens. And people who aren't here, um, it's really interesting for them to hear about it. And I know Richard's going to uh, has a video for another time, and we're going to be doing a few other pieces about this. But I think that that's a real Atlantic Canadian snow maple experience. But maybe tell them how you prepare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just to get to do that because I kind of have a little demo of what it looks like after. Yeah. We uh, what what a uh, a lot of uh, local camps that accept people, you know, that have public come in to visit. A lot of camps will do what we call maple taffy. And a lot of the tradition is to cook it, cook the syrup longer so it makes it thick and it'll pour on a, a bed of uh, packed snow or ice or whatever. So you David, I'm just going to show the yeah. group for a second this. So that yeah. I did on parchment, but then I put it in the snow. Right. Uh, versus just on the snow. I just ground some nuts on the top of it. Okay, so is that is that a brittle or is that still gooey? It's still slightly gooey and you can okay. tell them why. I'll turn okay, it so basically taffy stays gooey and kind of melts in your mouth. And then if you take it to a very higher temperature, it'll form like a hard uh, candy brittle. Uh, it looks like you've got something in between but uh, it's certainly going to be uh, sugar that tastes uh, wonderful, right? Yeah, you've got some brittle there, so uh, it's all good. But generally, once you get to that stage, you have to eat it or store it in a freezer because it'll just turn to sugar on you. Yeah. Thank you, David. And I knew, and I was speaking with Richard last night, and I laughed, and I said. I know that I didn't cook it long enough. <laughs> and I think the magic I've learned in around when I put it in a pan at about medium <laughs> in my, on my particular stove, if I let it simmer for about four minutes, it usually cooks it down. And my theory, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, David, is it's enough that it removes enough of the moisture out. Yeah. So then when it hits that super cold snow, it really gives you more of that crack yeah. And that I was going for the crack what, part uh, in it. Did you well, use a candy? Did you use a candy thermometer or not? No. No. A candy thermometer uh, would be a real great asset. Uh, to get a hard brittle to lay on the snow, you need it at about 280 Fahrenheit, upwards of 300 in that uh, area of temperature. Um, taffy is a lot less. Um, taffy is will lay on the snow at about two, 245, I think we take it to, um, 235 in that area. Uh, if you don't cook it enough, what happens, the syrup will just run through the snow and you'll lose your syrup, basically. So. And we don't want that to happen. Yeah, we don't want to lose it, so. Yeah, we don't want to, I used the parchment just for my emergency on that one, so I was, yeah. I was at least wise on that, just to make sure the balance. You know what, David, thank you so much. I'm going to bump over to Jacqueline here because I'm really excited to see how she used your product in Vietnam in her recipe. So I'm going to put myself on mute, Jacqueline, and I'm going to make sure yeah. that you have sharing here. And yeah. we're excited to see what, there we go. Okay, once more, thank you, David, for special, for unique gifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm proud to, to use maple sugar Good. to uh, to cook get okay, the special dish today um, let's see do you see do you see my powerpoint yes yeah yeah okay um in vietnamese we say chè bắp um chè in English, you can say uh, sweet soup and bok corn. And uh, I, I use maple sugar to cook chè bok, okay? And you know, chè bok is one of the Vietnamese popular desserts. People love to eat chè bok 
and uh, they they eat yeah bắp as a, a snack too about uh, uh, two or three uh, p.m. they eat yeah bắp um, now let's talk about the the ingredients uh, there are two parts here okay as you can see here two parts uh, the above is the coconut milk uh, sauce and below it is uh, the sweet soup and now for the sweet soup uh, we need corn and uh, pandan you know pandan it is a kind of tropical tropical pan, uh, plants whose leaves uh, are used uh, for cooking and um, it, uh, they give the flavor as um, vanilla and people use often use it uh, for cooking um, another thing yeah I used maple sugar normally people use brown sugar but okay for this with soup uh, it is very special and uh, maple sugar makes the soup the, the taste and the flavor more special. My sons love, love this sweet soup very much. Mm. Uh, we need a pinch of salt. Uh, here, this is corn starch. And here, this is uh, tapioca starch. Um, for the sweet soup, uh, I use corn starch to make the flavor of the soup better at the end and for the coconut milk sauce we use coconut milk unsweetened um, here just a little tapioca starch and a pinch of salt now uh, let's talk about the um, the instructions uh, now for the sweet soup uh, you can use a sharp knife uh, or uh, this uh, tool. I don't know how to, to say it. Maybe it is, um, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know how to use the English word. Uh, we have to cut the, uh, the kernels out of the corn cobs and then we simmer the corn cobs and pandan in a boiling water. Uh, we have to use about one liter Actually, I use just uh, 800 uh, millimeters and the soup uh, was a little bit uh, thick. So we need to use uh, about one liter and we have to boil it for 20 minutes. After that, we remove the corn cobs and pandan and add the shaved needle, uh, sorry, kernels and a pinch of salt and cook for 15 minutes. And after that, we add maple sugar and remember, we had to stir the soup constantly to prevent the corn um, sticking and burning at the bottom of the, the saucepan. And then we uh, dissolve the corn starch in cold water and pour slowly into the soup and simmer for two more minutes. And for the coconut milk sauce, it's easy. We boil the coconut milk with a pinch of salt and then dissolve the tapioca starch with cold water and add into the sauce. And then we simmer for two minutes. And we can uh, serve uh, the sweet soup uh, warm, or uh, we can chill it in, chill it in the, the refrigerator. And uh, um, the taste, the flavor uh, is still the same. If we, we serve it warm or uh, Cold. Okay, that's it. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? I'm going to make a comment and there might be some questions, but yeah, Jacqueline, I am very excited about trying that and you do such a fantastic job of explaining. And I have yeah. a feeling David Briggs and I might get together and figure it out. We've got to hold till the end of the month. That might yeah. be a pretty special piece that we can capture that part of the video and be able to show a very unique recipe that yeah, you did thank you. a tremendous job of. And it's so great to hear how much yeah. the kids are enjoying that. Yeah, and I'm I so know happy. Gary's kids are enjoying it as well. So 
One of these days, we'll jump in there for her. David, what did you think? Yeah, it looks very tasty. Anything with sugar in it, it's got to be tasty, <laughs> especially <Yeah>. maple. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is really delicious. Okay. Very, well, very uh, just special. Michelle, yeah. I have a a recipe, and you asked me what one of my favorite recipes would be, yeah. and it's kind of funny. It's a little bit uh, similar, only it's not a soup, but it's uh, maple cornbread. So the base is corn corn flour, and uh, we add maple syrup to uh, sweeten it. And it's one of my uh, most used recipes that calls for maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> I think that sounds incredible. And we're gonna make sure that we get, there's a, a I love it. Elinda from Brazil is giving you an extra thumbs up, David. <laughs> and probably the both. We're going to make sure that we get that recipe out there for everybody. And we're, we're getting a, a, a lot more of our weekly recipes back up. So uh, this will be a particularly fun week. But I'm going to go over to Roz in a second and get her to talk to us about some granola. And then I don't know about you, Richard, but I'm going to be looking for a cocktail. But I'm going to give you an onion update, everybody. First of all, see the onion facial that I'm getting. You still have to make the pan wet because I want to see how they're cooking down now. But mom is doing an amazing job and they've got a little bit of brown on them. Just a tiny little bit. But those are cooking down beautifully, but they still need about another 15, 20 minutes. So Roslyn, how about some granola? Yes, thank you, Michelle. Hi, everybody. So I uh, am doing a maple granola. If you don't have maple, you can also use uh, local honey. Uh, so for your sweetener. So the, I'm using uh, Canadian oats. Use the large oats for granola. Uh, the smaller oats like the instant oats don't roast well. The granola needs to cook for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So the smaller oats will not hold up to that kind of intense heat at 325. So I put six cups of oats in the bowl and then you add uh, two cups of whatever nuts you prefer. I like walnuts, so that's going in there. And it only called for one cup of uh, sesame seeds, but are not sesame seeds, sunflower seeds. I like a lot of sunflower seeds. So I put a oh, cup and a half right around there. But it does call for a special ingredient, which Michelle and I both love is coconut. So I use unsweetened coconut because I am sweetening my maple, my uh, granola with maple syrup. Obviously, Dave, I got, I got to come visit you because I'm getting low. But uh, I did two cups of coconut and it just all goes in and you just give it a quick stir just to make sure it's all kind of evened out. And then it calls for um, about a teaspoon of, uh, of uh, cinnamon. I, however, prefer much more cinnamon than that. So I give it a really good shake. It's up to everybody as to what they mm -hmm. like. Rosalind, so, I'm telling you right now, I get it. That might be the funniest. You were like, I don't even remember her name of a cookie show on that cinnamon shake. Woo! David, you got to hold that jug up one more time. Rosalind, you didn't see it. Look what he held up. Oh my gosh. Now, we need one of those. Okay, David. <laughs> So I've already heated a cup of coconut oil and a cup of maple syrup because it needs to be gelled together. And then I'm gonna add, and I have white vanilla that I picked up with uh, Michelle in the Dominican Republic last February when we were down there for a week. She was there for two weeks, I was there for one week. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of vanilla to the uh, coconut oil and maple syrup. Give that a quick stir and then you put it in the you slowly pour it in give it a stir every now and then and then you put it in the oven on parchment paper because it makes it easier to um, stir the thing about granola and making granola is you need to be very careful and you have to stir it quite often because it's at 325 for an hour. And if you don't stir it on a regular basis, it will uh, brown and burn. So you have to really keep an eye on it for an hour and 15 minutes. So it does take some time, but it's delicious. 
at the very end of uh, afterwards, they say that you can add it while you're roasting it, but I don't really like my raisins or cranberries. I prefer cranberries. I add them after the granola is cooled. So then you just give it a stir. As you can see, I'll bring it up to you. It doesn't look like much right now, but it's, I can smell the maple syrup, the coconut. It's delicious. So you give it a really good stir. This makes about 14 one cup servings. So what I do is you have to store it in a dry place. But what I do is I put it in the freezer because it takes a long time for one person to eat that much. Mind you, Michelle and, uh, and uh, Helen are going to get some, but that's a bonus. But my point is, is that I stick it in a Ziploc bag or a container to dry, to store it dryly. And then I put it in the freezer and then I just take it out of the freezer as I want to use it. That way I have granola uh, for a later time. So it does take a little time to make, but you get to enjoy it for a very long time. So that's uh, pretty much it. It's that simple. You literally mix all the ingredients, put it in the oven on parchment paper and a tray. And I roast three trays at a time. That's why I have to be very careful about how it cooks. Otherwise it browns and it burns. And I've been there, done that before. And that's just no fun. I eat it anyway, but you know, it just doesn't taste the same by any means. <laughs> Back to you, Michelle. Rosalyn, that is amazing. I have to say that's going to be a cinnamon uh, granola and good news because I love the cinnamon. No more. Uh, I do love cinnamon, but I would I would probably hold back on that. Um, speaking of cinnamon and drinks and things, I'm going to turn it over to our mixologist in Ireland, who is breaking out his maple. And I know he's, uh, I think he's got a cocktail. I'm going to have him pronounce it. And he's been working on this one for a bit. And I know he's always using Canadian maple. Um, I put my ingredients over here. And um, the one that I'm going to get, Mom, could you put some ice in that? That I'm just going to kick off. This is an inspired. I really don't have a problem using maple in anything and everything. I think David and I said that. I've said before I can put it in anything. Um, for me, it's about clean eating, too. So it is not a refined sugar. It's a much healthier lifestyle. And it really allows your body to process it. But Let's talk about some few fun things. So mom put about a cup of ice in here and we're gonna have a shares in this, but I am going to put in there. So this is an organic coconut beverage. It's an unsweetened, just coconut beverage. So it was inspired Jacqueline. And I'm gonna put about two cups of this into here because mom and I are gonna share this. And in my little mixer, of course, I'm going to put a half a shot of maple syrup. And I'm using this nice dark maple syrup. So there we go. Maybe a little more. Oh, that might be a little more than a half a shot of maple syrup. But, well, that's going to taste good. So in that's going to go. So, and then the other ingredient, and I love my travels, and also a well one here, because Rosalind used to run a bar for a lot of years. And this is the Havana Club. I actually got this really nice rum when I was in Cuba. So this one came back kind of like the Pisco Sours coming in your suitcase. This one came back from a trip, Marcella. So I figured what better way to rinse out the maple syrup cup. So we're gonna put uh, equal maple syrup in rum. How's that for? So because it is the morning, so this is our celebratory drink. So mom, you can grab those couple of glasses and that is our maple coconut rum cocktail. So that's how pretty it looks at that. So one for me and one for mom. And I also figure it'd be good in a blender. So come on over here, mom. So cheers to you, Richard. We're looking forward to you joining us with yours. <laughs> All right. mine, is not, uh, mine is not so dissimilar to that it's, it's going to be the same color when we're done now i i've invented this by myself i think 
so we can maybe name it together. Okay, so the first ingredient, the first ingredient is a banana. Okay, so I'm going to put this banana into this little blender, which is full of coffee. This is full of coffee, fresh coffee, which I've just made. And it's, uh, it's cooled down a little bit because we want this to be a little bit cool. And now, now I'm going to take a, a free range organico egg and I'm going to put it in that. That's crazy, isn't it? That sounds like a Christmas drink almost. It's called eggnog in Canada and um, the US. It's very popular in Canada and the US. And you normally add it to uh, milk and then you mix it with um, rum or whatever you like. But there's a, there's a little bit of milk I'm gonna add just for the color, coconut milk, of course, which uh, looks kind of good. So this is just to make the color come out the same as the other one. And then, and then, so this is kind of like, it's kind of like a Christmassy kind of drink, but you see here in Ireland, it's, it's coming into March, St. Patrick's Day is a day away or a week or so away. So that's like the Irish Christmas, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna add some Irish whiskey as well, okay? That's the Jameson there. And I know um, for some of you, it's too early on a Sunday to, to have this, but in Ireland, it's well past noon and in Vietnam, it's almost midnight, so. <laughs> we can do that. So we're going to add a little bit of that. And then, of course, the last ingredient, saving the best for last, is the maple syrup. And this is this is the organic stuff I'm using. There's just a little bit left. I have another bottle, though, just in case anybody else wants to drink. <laughs> so this is going to go in there. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, uh, it's funny because I was looking at some of the history of, of maple syrup, and the first, the first Europeans that ever wrote about it were, um, it, it was in 1536, and it was Jacques Cartier. He was a, an early French explorer, and they came into, um, they came into that part of Canada, which, which uh, eventually they settled and called it Acadia in Quebec. Uh, but they first, when they first saw it, it was 1536, and they they went offshore. They had a ship, and they chopped down what they thought was a maple tree. But of course, it turned out to be it turned out to be a maple syrup tree. And then and then the the syrup started leaking out of the tree. So obviously, when you're on these voyages for six months back in the 1500s, you're probably pretty hungry. You're like, okay, I'll try some of that. Um, and that would have been the probably for them, that would have been probably the first and most sweetest thing they ever had in their life, other than wine, because they compared it to a fine wine. Because you have to remember, it was, uh, it was the settlement of North America that first started with the sugars that started going back to Europe. Before that, they only had honey. So that would have been the sweetest thing they ever had. There's a lot of interesting history there. It wasn't mentioned again until 1557. And that's when, of course, I mean, not to imagine that the Europeans discovered it because um, it was another French explorer who, who uh, found some native um, North Americans and they called the tree Couton, and, but they had a distilling process and they did it every year. And it was part of their, part of their, you know, ceremonies. And it was a, it was a special treat, almost like, um, you know, anything at, at Christmas time, like eggnog is a treat at Christmas time. So they would have it then. And um, yeah, then it became a bit of an industry. In fact, what, what I did find out was that the first um, major exporter was in the 1600s, sorry, no, the 1700s to France, to uh, back to France, was a woman from um, Montreal, Agnes de, de Cartier, I think something like that. I could be wrong there, but it was very rare for the time because, you know, most of the time back then women didn't have big industries, but she was actually the supplier to the king the King of France, um, Louis the 14th. And he enjoyed it for many, many years until, until he had trouble swallowing after the thing. So David, how much of that history did you already know? Uh, not sure my history uh, experiences are quite the same as Richard's. Uh, <laughs> my, my knowledge or my, my uh, my, I guess my upbringing, uh, we were uh, we were told the natives showed the uh, first explorers that landed here um, how to uh, 
how to tap the maple tree and to uh, how to boil it to make maple syrup. Uh, a lot of uh, folklore and legends say that the natives discovered it by accident, by hunting one time and a, I don't know, an arrow or a, a blade of some sort <laughs> uh, penetrated a tree and water started coming out of the tree. So um, thinking this was a different source of water, they tasted it and it tasted sweet. Uh, so, well, we'll cook with it. So the natives started cooking their, their meat, their venison, whatever, in this sweet water. And essentially it boiled and, and evaporated and became very sugary and made the meat, the meat taste amazing. So uh, that's, that's my history lesson. I don't know whose is right and whose is wrong, but uh, I'm not going to dispute anybody because uh, oh, no, that's a long time ago. All right. <laughs> Yours is absolutely right. Mine was just the first recorded, the first time it was recorded. Yeah. Like, so Jack Cartier, he wrote about it. And, right. um, and, that's, and then it was written about again by another French explorer in 1557 who confirmed it was obviously not a French discovery but that the natives had been doing this for many years. The bow and arrow story, that could be true. It sounds like the Beverly Hillbillies a little bit. <laughs> you got a rabbit and some maple came out. <laughs> but you know what, that's what I was listening, David. I think that that's what we were saying is both of them are true because what it is is the perspective of. Uh, Richard, is you, are you gonna blend your cocktail? So I'm yeah. gonna maybe put it on mute and I'm gonna tell, tell the maple thing. You go ahead. <clears throat> so, one of my absolutely favorite products in the world, and Marcella, I'm sure that this is one of Emilio's. There's no doubt in my mind. And that's the pure maple butter. And I'm gonna ask David to, to give us the point of how that comes there. So the other thing is these were maple Santa's, David. Marcella, this was in the box that we never ended up shipping to Chile. And he's looking a little rough. I'm gonna eat them today and, and give you a fresh one. But this is some of the products that are neat. So maybe David, explain what goes to get it to here. Yeah. And this is the best on your toast. So anybody who likes Nutella out there in the world, this will replace Nutella or peanut butter or you mix it with, my favorite Roz, you know what I like to do? I actually mix some maple butter with a little peanut butter and a little jelly. Definitely. So maybe explain how it gets to this consistency to the butter. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. we take we take the maple syrup, uh, preferably a lighter color maple syrup, an early season syrup, because it has uh, less invert sugar in it. So we cook it uh, about eight degrees hotter than 220. So about 228 to 232 in that area. So it makes it thicker again. Once it's reached that temperature, it's poured and put in a, a water bath in a pot. So the water bath or, or whatever, ice water, whatever you wanna do, will cool it down uh, as quickly as possible. So it gets to about room temperature. And then all we do from there is stir it. You could stir it by hand. Uh, we have a machine that stirs it very quickly for us, so it goes a lot faster, and it turns the, it grinds the sugar molecules into sugar molecules, or maple syrup molecules into a sugar, and it forms a, a soft, uh, smooth spread. And, and yeah, there, it says butter, but, but there's no butter in it. It's just the term used, and in, in it's a spreadable product and in the U.S. they call it maple spread actually and it's just a different name that we use here in Canada um, and yeah it's it's great on toast that's where most people I say it's great right off off the spoon from the jar is probably the best way to eat it um, we uh, we have uh, the, the, uh, the town of Riverview here locally uh, has developed a really unique product with our maple butter and they call it Briggs maple s'mores. So uh, they take uh, the s'mores, which is the graham cracker, chocolate, and marshmallow, and add some Briggs maple butter to it. And uh, it's been a hit for the last uh, 10 or 12 years. So it's a really popular treat. <laughs> and How the maple. Can it not be? Yeah. That's just incredible. The like... maple Santa, the maple Santa, Michelle, that's, that's just cooked about. 
another eight degrees more. So what that does, it just makes it set up so it's not a spread anymore. It's more like a fudge texture. Very, very similar in taste, but yeah, he's looking pretty sad there. I think I think he's had better days, Michelle. <laughs> Tastes fantastic. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Nothing's better than that. Richard, I am looking forward to hearing about. Thank you, David. Let's see what you got going on for your cocktail. Okie dokie. So it's all blended up, as you can see. Oh, by the way, the, the woman's name was Agatha de Repignite. And she was um, a famous Montrealer who, who basically, she was the biggest businesswoman in maple syrup going back to um, to France in the 17, mid 1700s. So that was kind of rare in those days, but it was the, the start of the age of enlightenment. So it was, it was something, um, something of note anyway, we should note that. <laughs> um, so here we are and I'm going to pour it in here. So this, uh, as you can see, it has the same sort of texture as a, as a milkshake and it's even healthier than a milkshake. In fact, it's way healthier than a milkshake, I'd say. So we've got the maple, we've got a full banana in here. Uh, we could easily put two. Um, we've got the egg, which is nice. Oh, that's really nice. That's really, really nice. It's, it smells really good. And then, and then we can still add a little bit more whiskey because, um, because we're in Ireland, you see? So we can just top it up a little bit like that. And now there's actually a verb for that. You, you often think of Ireland or Irish as an adjective. He's an Irish man or an Irish woman, or it's an Irish song, but it's also a verb, part of a verb phrase. You can Irish something up. And that's when you do that, you add this to it. <laughs> it's called Irishing it up. <laughs> so it's, a, it's also a gem. We're going to be focused on Irish recipes and, any, and, and, and Irish inspired recipes next week. So we're really excited about that in honor of St. Patrick's Day that's coming up. So, so you, remember what we said? That was perfect segue, Richard, to Irish up your recipe next week. <laughs> it's not exactly politically correct, but the Irish don't really, they don't get offended too easily. So it's okay. They, they don't mind. <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, I'm going to rhyme in here, Richard. I really want, I'm going to try that drink later. Just putting that out there. Um, this is the caramelized onions, which everybody can see how they cook down. And they are, not, they're just, Beautiful. See the consistency of them. Hopefully you can see how that comes out. So, and you, and I hope you can see where they're long. So if you would have cut them short, you wouldn't get that piece. So the one ingredient I haven't added. So I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup of maple syrup in this amount. Maybe a little more starting to look like Roz and her cinnamon, but I'm adding the maple syrup now and I'm going to stir that in and I'm really not, I'm going to put it on the burner and just let it simmer for a couple of minutes on a real low because I don't want to cook the maple syrup out of what those onions are. So that is going to be the onion sauce that I'm having on top of my maple glazed pork. So for the record, it does smell as good as it looks. And it does. And you can really get the maple note now on top of it. So I'll make sure I put that recipe out there. David, these are the ones that we said that we would put into a jar and seal hot on a lid. We definitely would need a lot of onions for that. So mine's got the burner heated up here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tear off that pork. And I've done with this pork, and, and one of the things is I put a couple of different spices on it. So we seasoned the pork loins last night. So they're just two like regular sized pork loins. Jacqueline, I think they're similar to the size that you would use in your recipe the other day, but we've got this great garlic pepper rub. So the nice thing about that one is that has a little maple in it. So I kind of cheated and put that. So let's cut your salt and pepper. But the other seasoning that I used on it was some paprika. So there's a paprika garlic salt that Angela does. But for anybody who doesn't have the blend, you're just going to use some organic garlic powder, uh, paprika with a little bit of salt, pepper. And I love this because you imagine it has ground thyme in it. So I figure Angela made that one just for me. So that's what the, and I seasoned the pork with it last night. 
So now what I'm going to do is, and we've got a hot pan here with some great seed oil in it, because when you're searing meat, and we're searing it at a really high temperature, we want to use a high searing oil. So unlike the earlier recipe where we used olive oil, in this particular recipe, we've used a grapeseed oil. So I just made a set of tongs, which I'm going to put right here. So we set the pan nice and hot. I'm going to do a little bit of a bring you over here a piece of this so we can let everybody see. And hopefully we've got the pan nice and hot, Mom, because we're going to sear it. And one of the things when you're searing meat, because we're going to sear these and cook them later. And can you hear the sizzle? See, that one worked. And I'm a big fan of timing things. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put my trusty little kitchen timer on here for two minutes. And what I'm going to do is sear it out on either side for two minutes. And um, I love my kitchen timer because I can walk away and do other things. And I don't really need to do anything with it because what I want to get is a really good caramelization on the outside of the pork because I'm actually just going to sear it all. It's going to look like it's finished, but I'm going to cook that later tonight for supper. So while that pork is searing, one of the other recipes that I love doing with maple syrup and one of my favorite vegetables is sweet potatoes or a yam. And I think we've talked a bit about those in the past. Um, they're really plentiful around here in Atlantic Canada. And Angela Dugo from Friendly Farm Press dropped me off some yesterday and it's great because you were saying that it's just a peeler, Jacqueline, and I used the same peeler you did to peel these potatoes because they're almost for the shape of a carrot. So in this bowl, I have cut up the potatoes all around a similar size. And then I cut up and I put some half cloves of garlic. I'm purposely leaving them big because I really want to have the potatoes and the garlic through. The other thing I'm going to put in there is some salt and pepper. And again, just a little fresh thyme. I'm going to bake those, but instead of syrup on these ones, I'm going to bake them using the maple sugar. And the reason why is that's going to stick to them, where if I use maple syrup, it's going to drip down into the pan. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. And I'm going to bake those in the oven about 375 for about 45 minutes. So we'll make sure that we'll take some pictures of it after. But can you pass me the olive oil one? Or is it looking? Okay. So her two minute timer is going on. So, ooh, did you hear that? Helen's giving us the ooh and an ah. Yeah. Look at this. Fantastic job on the sear. Eric? Excuse me, Michelle, that is a sweet potato? Yeah, it's a saran cooking top. It's just a flat top. No, no, the potato is su sweet potato. Sweet potato, yeah. yeah. So, and you'll often hear them called a yam as well, but, you know, in and around here. So this is what the bowl looks like. I use a nice glass dish. You can see some of those whole garlic cloves and it's coated with the fresh thyme salt and pepper, and the last most important ingredient, which somehow I've lost my maple sugar. So I'll put the maple sugar on top of it, which I was just waving around, and it seemed to be missing off my cooktop. Here we go. So I'm gonna sprinkle this on top, and you don't need a lot, and I will tell you what I am gonna do. When it's almost done cooking, and I take it out of the oven, about five minutes before it's done, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more of that maple sugar on the top. And then that will really causing a little bit more of caramelization in the oven. And it really gives those potatoes an extra punch. Now I know everybody in and around the world has the maple sugar that they're access to, but I've often seen it done where I've used a coconut sugar, or another really nice organic sugar on that. And it really does, and it's the same technique, 
and it'll give you a rich flavor. But we'll certainly be excited when you come to Canada and um, you're able to experience it right here. Richard, please. If, uh, if a yam could speak English, what would it say? I am what I am. I hey. am what I am. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. Marcella, what are some of the maple memories that your kids have brought home from Canada to you there? that are some of your favorites? Yeah, well, Emilio uses it a lot for his breakfast with granola, oatmeal, and for his uh, coconut and coffee, coconut milk and coffee to sweeten a little bit also. And when we make cakes, we put a little bit on top of the cake. So it, it is shiny and it looks a little bit nicer, not so, so dark, so, so sad so and that is how we emptied the the jar <laughs> baking cakes and using uh, the syrup the, the maple in the morning for his breakfast yeah we also had some candies i remember you brought some with michelle yeah and a pan also like butter yeah 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 Definitely when we were traveling, we tried to bring her and David, it was always a trip down there. When Martina lived in Riverview and mom's got a great Riverview shirt on, I know today, David, which we, we got, we purchased at David's store. David Briggs has a big announcement too. He's just moving into his new facility down in Hillsborough, which on that map, which is exactly 14 kilometers down from my house. And we're really excited because he's bringing a much bigger maple experience. So Marcella, when you guys finally land here, it'll be neat to go visit. And, and have that privilege of being able to experience the orchards. And I know David is excited to, to really show the world a little bit more. It was a wonderful having us Rachel Star in Riverview, but he was never able to really take through the bigger experience. And he works really close here, same with Angela and those products, but Angela also makes the dark sheep um, from Edget's Landing. And um, this is the syrup that I use, that I'm gonna use when I top off some of, uh, one of my desserts later today. Now, I have, never, I have never tried that one, Michelle. It's, um, one. It's, a, it's a rich, deeper, it's thicker and a darker, much, much darker. And I think David might be able to speak to a little bit different technique that Angela and her team use on that, but it's really fun. I know Angela also just got a new piece of equipment that she purchased from David and their family, and she's just getting used to using it. David, um, do you want to speak maybe to a little bit different where that much darker and that technique that she used differently? It, it, it's not a different technique. Uh, we, we, we have the same product. It's just the time of year or the, the way it's processed. So if you boil sap very slow, you're going to get a much darker color or more uh, darker, stronger flavor. So it's all done the same way and, and, and we sell a lot of very dark syrup as well. We just provide a lot of the other grades of syrup. So some people don't like a really strong syrup. They'll, they'll want a lighter tasting syrup. We, we offer all the varieties and we often save the lighter syrups to make our other products because that's what they're best for. So okay. it's kind of just all in the, the speed in which it's processed or boiled. And yes, the, their their new evaporator was our old evaporator so my dad purchased a new uh oil fired evaporator this year from uh from myself i'm the representative for the company and he's installed a new one and angela and ryan her husband had just installed our old one so yeah we're quite excited it's just down the road from me now it's it's actually closer to to where i live and where our camp is so yeah oh, it's fantastic yeah. Well, thank so you for sharing me. that, David. You know, I like, I, and as you know, um, so on that refill bottle, I really do enjoy cooking with the darker one. And I think for a lot of the recipes, just because it, I, it's that heightened on that maple flavor. So let's have a look at it. My mom did an exceptional job. Get the sear on that pork. Absolutely perfect. So those two beautiful pork loins. Later, I will finish those in the oven. And, and, and what I will also do is just before I finish those in the oven, I will put a little bit of maple on top just to top it up. And they're gonna go into the oven for about 
18 minutes at 400 and they'll be done because they're, they're a fairly small piece and I really wanna make sure that they're nice and tender. So what I can say for everybody, from our kitchens to yours, thank you for joining us each week. And I wanna say cheers. And we really um, take the time each week to think about what, what we're cooking. And I hope that you take some time each week and explore some of the recipes you're going to see lots more recipes posted out on not just our Facebook page. We want to put them onto your website um, from all our guests from all over the world. It means it means a lot for us for you to take that time for us every day. So, ciao everybody. Have a Maplelicious okay. week. Thank you, David. We will see you next week Thank you. when we have Irish Chef recipes. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Have a good time. Bye.